bear for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The one who was predicted a long, long time ago. And he's still here. So we come with you open your mind, your heart, and accept him as he is. For our scripture this morning, I'd like to read Isaiah 9 chapter and the 6th verse. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And, um, and if you notice that, that's everything we need. That's the best present we can get because Isaiah said it would be there, it's there. And, and we should enjoy our present. And that's Jesus Christ. May we bow our heads and pray. Almighty and all wise God, as we come this morning, God, we realize we're not even worthy to call upon your holy and righteous name. But Father, we thank you for allowing your son to come that die for our sin, that we can call upon your name. And God, we ask each and every day that you continue to forgive us because each and every day we do something we shouldn't do. We have a tendency to forget who you are. You are mighty, you're wonderful, you're our counselor, and not only that, you are our savior, and you are our healer. And because we turn our eyes away from you and our mind away from you and look other ways, we are not having what we ought to have because God, you have everything we need. And you're willing to forgive it to us if we would only accept it. So God, I'm asking that you would open our heart and remove the animosity, whatever mess that's in our heart, out. That we can put you in there and do your will. And God, I know if we can do your will, everything will be all right. And right now, God, I ask that you would bring all our wondering minds in on you. Not on, on you, but God, help us to understand that it's you who has brought us to the fall. And help us to praise you as we are. God, as we move the things out of our life, where we can praise you, God. We ask that you continue to put stuff in us that we'll be able to praise you as we should and enjoy our praise with you. God, you are good to us. And this Merry Christmas, God, you have brought us this far. You brought us a Savior. The best gift we ever had or ever will have is the Savior that you brought us. May we now join together. And if there's anything bothering us, you God, you're willing to take it out so we can enjoy your service. Help us, God, and we'll sing along with the choir they sing now. For Christ's sake, amen. Amen. This is our last Sunday of the year. Will you help us celebrate the freedom that God has given us? Oh, are you glad that you're free today?
set you free. Yes, he want to do it. Oh, the testimonies are in the house of the Lord. Come on, the testimonies are in worship with him. Hallelujah. And when salvation comes in, good purpose comes with it. Hallelujah. How many know that he set you free to worship him? He set you free for his glory. He set you free that you'll get to know him.
give us this. This is our gift to worship. Come on, to hear from God for our sins. The freedom to praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Truly, we're free to praise God. And we thank Him for what He has done for us. God has been good to us. Even when we forget to be good to ourselves, God has been good to us. On this last Sunday of the month, God has been really good to us. For we celebrated Christ's birth on yesterday. We celebrated Christmas. And we know that during this time of Christmas and during this holiday, sometimes it's a season of despair. Sometimes it's a season of joy. Sometimes it's a season of, so of sorrow. So we come this morning to whatever season you may be in to lift you up out of that and put you on a living, a true living purpose, which is our subject for this morning. Living a true purpose. Living a true purpose. Regardless of how you see life, God is still there. We will be coming out of the book of Matthew 6, the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Matthew 6, 1 through 13. And I will text it, reads, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, to expound your word to give your people that which you have given us. You gave us a new revelation here. Father, we're asking, Lord, that that new revelation reach every ear, every heart, every mind, every soul to lead them in the paths of your righteousness. Forgive us of all our sins and unrighteousness that we be able, Lord, to be acceptable in thy sight at the second coming of Christ we want to be accepted. Yes. We want to go back yes. with him. Father, we ask the Lord that you open up our minds, open up our hearts, open up our souls, Lord, that we can receive that which you have for us, Lord. Not as a man, but as you, as our God, Lord. Talk to us. Use our vessel this morning. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I'd just like to say Merry Christmas to all of you on this morning. And I pray that you had a blessed Christmas and had a gracious time in the Lord. I know there's nothing like getting together with our loved ones, sharing food and, and the laughter and sharing the love. But there's someone out there this morning that lost a loved one. There may be someone out there that uh, for some reason or, or another they began to the holidays simply because it reminds them of a time they spent with their loved one that has gone on. My brothers and sisters, we're here to, regardless if you got what you wanted for Christmas, whether you had enough to give out that which you wanted to give, we're here this morning to give you a greater purpose in Christ Jesus. Living with a true purpose. And Christ Jesus is that which we uh, uh, seek to attain on this morning that we, we, we give up that which has happened on this last past year. And we flow into that which is to come that God has prepared for us. And God has prepared a lot of different places, a lot of different things in our lives. So we still can find hope, joy in the living of his purpose. All is not lost. I know God can feel that board that may be there. Sometimes it's finances. Sometimes we couldn't give our children that which we want to give. But the purpose of Christmas is that of celebrating the birth of Jesus, the Christ. Living a greater purpose or living a, a true purpose is reminding ourselves of the reason for the season, Jesus, the Christ. 
Regardless of how you remember this tradition that we've been taught uh, during Christmas time, regardless of whether you gave gifts or not, or regardless of whether you went to church or not, uh, Christ is the reason for the season. Come on. God can feel that purpose if we would give ourselves. Sometimes we during Christmas time and I'm guilty. Come on. Many of you out there might not be, might not be willing to admit it, but yeah. haven't you gotten something that you just didn't want? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Another pair of socks, a tie, <laughs> some undergarments. Yeah. You wanted something different, but somebody gave you that which you needed. When you're living a greater purpose, you'll see that God gives you what you need and some of what you want. Some of us, as we went through this season of Thanksgiving, uh, we wasn't too thankful, but we were looking for the turkey and the ham. And, and somewhere along the line, somebody didn't make the macaroni and cheese. Or somebody didn't make that favorite dish that you wanted, but you had what you needed. Life is simple. We was created to serve and worship the Almighty. Amen. Somewhere along the way, somebody became self-reliant. Somebody uh, became uh, self-aware and said that and changed it and made it a different way. We oftentimes do that same thing. We become self-aware and I want something to be this way. And God is standing there telling you, I have already given you that which you need to sustain you. Better than to, to sustain you, but make you blessed in this life. But even when at our best, uh, at our best abilities, we still look for something more. So this morning, we're going to find a new purpose. And that purpose is living in the true purpose of Jesus the Christ. We know we are in a time of giving. Mm -hmm. And we know our hearts, in our hearts, we want to give all these gifts to our loved ones. Mm -hmm. Come on. We want to feed the hungry. Yeah. We want to go out in the streets and deliver turkeys and hams. And this is the only time of the year other than, 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 than Thanksgiving that where companies are, are, are giving their employees turkeys and hams and giving them bonuses and, because they want everybody to be happy and, 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 and be self-aware that, 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 that they are taken care of. And, uh, but I want to ask you one question. Uh, what happened to the other 364 days of work? We only give it two days, uh, you know, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, what happened to the other 360, 60, 63 days, uh, or how many other days it is during the year that we, we forget about helping our fellow man, but somehow or another around Thanksgiving and Christmas time, our hearts change. But around the first of the year, <laughs> our heart goes back to where it was in the beginning. Because we're living with our own purpose. Yeah. We're not living with the purpose of God because 365 days is counted as a year. And to break and to today's uh, generation, uh, it takes 365 days. So, but, but that is God's purpose, that we be the same 365 days of the year. That we don't, we don't, we don't change on just two days. We have a given heart during Christmas time because uh, uh, Santa Claus had taught us that. Amen. Somebody told us about Jesus and how he gave his life uh, uh, only on Christmas time. But I can remember that during uh, Easter time, the same thing happened. He gave his life for us. Every day of our lives, he, he's seeking to draw us closer through the dignity of the Holy Spirit, closer to the Father. So he gave us this Lord's Prayer as we, as we counted in Matthew 6. He, he, he gave us this Lord's Prayer, and he does a pattern of prayer, but it's more than that. Yes, it is. It's a standard of living. It's a change of purpose. 
is a declaration of our faith. These words are clear to how we're supposed to see life and how we're supposed to love one another. It's ironic that Jesus is, 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 is giving this to the disciples, but it is, it is connecting them. If you really look at what the words are saying, as we get into this sermon, what the words are actually saying, it is connecting you with our fellow man. Amen. And acknowledging God for who he is. It is connecting you. You're making a declaration to God, our fellow man, and to yourself. Mm -hmm. That how are we supposed to see? Yeah, Matthew 6 and 1 and 13, it says, Take heed that you do not do, arm, do your arms before men to be seen of them. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, my brothers and sisters, we got to examine ourselves. Come on. Why do we want to give all these gifts during Christmas time? Many of us save up our money. Others go to the banks and get great loans to give. Everybody gives during Christmas time, whether it's monetary or whether it's physical gifts. Or, but this is the time of the year we want to give each other cars, and, and this is the time that we want to give each other uh, clothing and, and, and the various gifts that we do give one another. But what happens during the rest of the year? This is the time to where we come to church and we want to give a great offering. That's all right. I'm not stopping you from giving you a great offering. <laughs> but sacrifice is better. Amen. Sacrifice is better 365 days a year than one offering during one day of the year. Amen. Sacrifice is better. Now, I'm not stopping you from giving you all. But God wants something a little bit deeper that we don't do it just to be seen of men. I gave my wife different things so other other women and other men can see and say, real, he really treating his wife rude. Right. But 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 beyond the giving, I treat her, I treat her bad. Come on. I won't tell her I love her. All right. Come on. I won't treat her as I love her. Come on. Then Christmas time comes. I give her some great gift, and she's sitting there. Because I give it in front of everybody. And she sat in there saying, yeah, right. <laughs> All right. What happened to the other <laughs> 363 days of the year? Come on. You don't only honor me on one day. I'm going somewhere with this because we only honor Christ and give it on one day of the year, the 25th day of December. We make sure everything is right and we make sure that Christmas tree have gifts up under it. We make sure that everybody's thought about it. We make sure that we cook the right foods and everything is to the standard that we want it to be. On the 25th day of December, but on the 26th day of December, we go back to doing what we've been doing before. I just here this morning to give you a greater purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Living with a true purpose. Because God can see through the purpose that you have. Mm -hmm. We all want to be elevated. We all want folks to, to like us. And that's our humanistic side. We all want to be exalted in the land of the living. We all want people to look up to us. But greater than that, we, we should want God to accept us. Because God sees the inward parts of your heart. He knows whether you're giving it just to be seen or you're giving it out of your heart. And if you're giving it out of your heart, then it's more than the 25th day of this symbol. God gave us something. We celebrate. We all know that Jesus, somebody having a problem with Jesus, uh, we celebrate Jesus on December 20th. He wasn't born on that day. And that's, that, 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 the day that he was born is the significant day. But we took the 25th day of December here in America to celebrate that, that day. We know that he wasn't born on that day. But the day that he was born keeps on giving. Right. We know it was around November or September or somewhere in that, that time frame. But the day that we celebrate is on the 25th day of December. But what I'm here to let you know that there's a greater purpose of, it, of him being born. Because it's the, it's the giving that never stopped. He continued to give to us and humanity all the days as long as the world is here. He continued to give. His blood was shed in our uh, over 2,000 years ago. But it continued to wash us. Yes. Yeah. To cleanse us. Yes. All for one day. It didn't stop on that one day on his birth. It continued to flow. Think about 
the power there. Mm-hmm. From here, priests, the Holy Spirit to you. Mm-hmm. So now you have an open access to the Father. You don't have to go through anyone. Amen. All you have to do is ask Him to forgive you for all your sins and unrighteousness and believe it in your heart that you are saved. Then you will be saved. And you have open access to him. And his blood washes you. And his Holy Spirit comes down and it fills you. Mm-hmm. And you're made clean before the Father. Mm-hmm. It, it, it just don't stop on one day. It continues the whole, day, the whole time that you are alive. It continually to heal. Mm-hmm. So don't stop by giving. All right. Just because the 25th was on yesterday. We got a whole year that's before. Let us prepare ourselves this, this, this week that is coming before the 1st of January. Let us prepare ourselves for the great giving of, 19, of 2022. We got a whole year that's before us to give and to show the generosity of who, of who that we amplify, which is Christ Jesus, who gave unto the world unmercifully. It was without Mary, it, it, it didn't, he didn't give it because of who you was. He gave it because he loved you so. Amen. He didn't give it and just rationing it out. <laughs> he gave it so you can have the whole song. Whatever you should ask, so shall it be given. Be given. Mm-hmm. He gave it and he continued to give it to us. That which we need and some of what we want. So he says, don't do it just because before me to be seen of me. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Meaning that God knows what on the inside and the reason that you gave. And then he says in the second verse of Matthew 6, he says, therefore, thou dost thine arms, do not sound the trumpet before thee. Mm-hmm. And we got to have a great service to give to somebody. Uh, next year, next week, we're going to have a great service, and I want you all to come. We're going to have try fried chicken, and we're going to have this and that, and we're going to sit down, and we're going to have a good time, and we're going to take up some money for y'all. All right, now. Why we just can't take the chicken by the house? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Back about how we do things. It's not nothing wrong with having great services. But just think about it, that we don't have to go and tell folks when we have folks. Come on now, we got to do some things in secret. This is what they pray. This is Jesus praying here, showing his disciples how to pray here. Huh? Then he says, do not sound the trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues. Mm. At church, huh? Huh? And in the streets. I'm to give an arms just to be seen to me. That they may not, that they may glory of me. Verily, verily, I say unto ye that they have their reward. Mm-hmm. Amen. And then it says, But when thou dost arm, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand does. Mm-hmm. That thine arms may be in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee. Opening. So, therefore, sometimes we have to help folks, regardless of who know about it or not. We just reach in our pockets and we give that which we have or that which the Lord is leading us to give, and we do it in secret. We don't run and tell everybody that I paid somebody like you and I, I've done this and that because we're looking for a reward there. We want people to, to look at us, oh, he made such and such light bill and helped them with their house. He put clothes on their children back. And, and now he's standing around with a big bull horn and telling everybody about everybody else's business. Amen. That is your reward. Amen. But when we do it in secret, when we do it in a secret place, when we, when we don't let nobody know about it, and we get it from our hearts and we have folks in the secret place, God will reward you openly. This is all Jesus is saying. But we give to him. Maybe it don't need to be wrapped up. With a shiny bow on it, somebody knows a gift. Either. Maybe we just need to walk by and put it in somebody's pocket. 
just shake their hand and put a little money in it sometimes. Maybe sometimes we need to get their telephone number and just pay the telephone bill. Maybe sometimes we need to go down and pay the water bill and the light bill without them knowing about it. We ain't got to tell them I did it. Just go down and pay it. I never forget it. Our first son was born. We had a medical bill and they called us and told us, I don't know if my wife would remember it or not, but they called us and told us that it was paid. We never to the day know who paid. Amen. But somebody paid. Amen. And we give God all the glory and the thanks. Amen. Because we know that God inspired somebody to do Amen. that which they did. They didn't do it to get our hands shaking and for us to tell them thank you. But nowadays when we help folks, we want to thank you. Not knowing that it ain't us anyway, it's God. We are blessed with what we have because we're children of God. To help the children of God. To help the world come out and see God for who he is. He is the provider. He is the creator. He is the one that makes things happen out of nothing. Not us. We are just vessels. And preaching this word, I don't need a pat on the back. Oh, it feel good. Ready to preach this morning. Oh, it sound good. But it is God that gave me the, the revelation. It is God that gave me the word. See, he picked me up out of the street and told me to preach the word. So I'm preaching the word. Not for myself, but, but, but for, for him. He is the master. He is the one that, that called me up out of the street. He is the one that made me who I am. I'm not who I am by myself. I am that I am made who I am. So I don't often tell you when I help folks. I don't often let my wife know when I help folks. I just help them. Simply because I'm not seeking a reward from somebody. But somebody said, well, if you have told me, I would have helped you. But it won't show up. God told me to do it. It was mine pledge to do it. It was, he called me to do it like he called me to preach it. So I preach it. It is mine to preach. Because he gave it to me. As he did it, I give it out. But if I keep a little bit, then I have my reward too. So he's teaching them before he gives the prayer. He's teaching them something. And then he said, when thou prayers, that pray, uh, shall not be as the hypocrites, but they pray, uh, they love to stand praying in the synagogues and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. Some preachers can't preach unless they got an audience. Some preachers can't, can't pray. Some deacons, some people can't pray unless they got somebody amen uh, to them. But they don't know that they have a conversation with God anyway. I don't have to have the amen. I don't, oh, this sounds good. It makes me, makes me want to pray a little bit harder. But I'm talking to God. And, he, you know, what you're hearing is supposed to be an open, an open communication channel with God. If you hear it, that's good. But I'm talking to God. Amen. All right. Just thank God. Come on. When we do our prayers, mm -hmm. we talking, we, we, we talking to men. And we telling people in our prayers what we want them to do. When we're supposed to have a communication with God. We're supposed to be taking you with us to the Lord. Amen. Opening communication. That's fine if I hear it and you're praying. But you actually ain't talking to you. You're talking to God. Amen. So now I see a little different. That's all right. But when I pray, I'm talking to God. Amen. I'm praying right now. Lord, give me something else to say. <laughs> you don't know unless I tell you. Because I have open communication with him. I don't have to wait to get in the church to pray to God. I don't have to wait to get at night on my knees, but on my bed. Matter of fact, I, when I'm laying down, I'm talking to God. When I get up, I'm talking to God. When I'm on my way, I'm talking to God. Because I, you might say I'm crazy, but I'm talking to God. God's put a Holy Spirit on the inside. Sometimes I ask myself, is it all right? He says, it's all right. Sometimes I ask myself, is it wrong? He says, it's wrong. Don't do it. And then we have to have a discussion about me, myself, and God. Now, some of you might hear it and say, Rip, it's just crazy. When I was a little boy, I 
up to her, my grandma in there praying and talking to God, and uh, all of us get quiet. You know, grandma in there crazy. Grandma crazy. I didn't just say nobody in that room, but it was her and God. Yeah. And then when I met my wife, I her mother was, 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 was going in the bedroom. She'd be sitting in there talking to God and, and singing with God. And, you know, and as I was, I, I knew what, what she was doing, but I didn't really realize it until I started talking to God. Having communion with God without having communion with God. Having communion with God uh, in, in, in the house. Having communion with God on the job. Having communion with God wherever we are at the time that we need to talk with God. Because we got a God on the inside of us. We are not God, but we got a God on the inside of us. That's needing and guiding us. The Holy Spirit is there needing and guiding us and showing us what the Father needs from us. And I mean, the truth. Purpose. Yeah. And then he says, But when they pray, they use vain repetitions. I'm guilty. Y'all guilty? Yeah. Oh, we can talk. Yeah. But if you want a video, you can say, Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I repeat myself, you know, because it sounds good. Thank God, good. Yeah. It sounds good. It sounds good and we learn those prayers and we know what moves people and what gets people up and shout. And, and, and we even when we're preaching and when we're talking, uh, we're telling those jokes or something. We, we got to put some, 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 some spirit in it. Because if, you, if you're a comedian and you have no spirit in you, you, you can't tell the joke with, with some spirit in you. People are just sitting there, look at you, they won't laugh, they won't invite you to come back to the comedy show. But that's how life is. So we learn main repetitions of things. Be careful. Be careful. Because God knows who you're talking to. He knows when you're talking to him and when you're talking to folks. He knows when you're trying to win him and when you're trying to win folks. He knows when you're doing what he sent you to do and when you're doing what folks want you to do. He knows. Oh, come on, this is the last Sunday of the year. I can take my time on this Sunday. That way, next time you come, you say he was a little long when last last year. <laughs> but then you'll be gone, right? <laughs> and then he says, he says here, uh, as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Amen. I'm educated now, so I don't. I use the right predicates and I use the right Bibles in the right places, and I know what a noun is, so. I can do a great speech, and I stand here as we've been taught, and I stand with my hands beside me, and, uh, because we was taught to give eyes to people and look across the room, and we don't walk around and talk as we do. You know how we do? We we we, we do like this. We take the mic down. That's that is wrong. I'm not here trying to please you. I know the right way to do it because I've been taught, and I know how it's taught us. The public speaking. I'm not here to, to honor that. Sometimes I'll stand right here and I do as I was taught and I stand right here and I, I gaze and I look around and I, I keep it on the subject. But sometimes I vary sometimes because this is who I am. This is who God called me to be. God told Moses. I am that I am. So that we don't do things to be men pleasers. So that people can hear us and say, how great. Now don't get me wrong. I, I, I enjoy hearing some of the, my brothers when they preach, they can stand still. You know, I, I, I may have 88 with it, 88, 88. ADHD or, or something, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to be still, it's hard for me not to talk with my hands, you know, it's hard for me to just stand here and just talk, but God called me the way I was, yeah. or the way I am, right. and he molds me and he changed me to that which I am, see some people can do it and some people cannot, so what we don't do is to please, whether you're standing straight, you, you, you've been trained to do it a certain way, whether you can or cannot, we don't do what we do just to please men and women. We mean that to the politicians. We're not politicians. We're not door-to-door -door salesmen. We try to say everything just right. We try to keep every detail just right because we're trying
trying to sell you something. I'm not trying to sell you Jesus. I'm trying to give you Jesus. It's for free. So then he said, he, he, he's, Jesus, this is Jesus right here. He's really giving us something to think about. Mm -hmm. And then he says, be ye therefore like unto them. For your father knows what things you have need of before you ask. Mm -hmm. After this manner, therefore ye. He's getting on the end. See, he had to, he had to give them strength. You just don't go to God any kind of way. Amen. See, he had to give them strength. In other words, what he was saying here in, in verses 1 through 9, or verse 1 through 8, he was getting their mind and heart straight on, because we get ready to go talk to the Father right now. Mm -hmm. right. So I need your hearts and your mind straight on the Father, not on what you need, mm -hmm. not on what you want. But on the Father. Because He is the creator, He's the giver of life, He's the sustainer of life. He's the, he's the supreme being. He's the, he's the one that created the universe, the known universe as we know. I know science might say it was a big bang, but He's the one that was doing bang. I'm not in the spirit of how different people say it happened, but God was the one that did it. I give him all the honor and the glory simply because he was the one that did it. And so when I talk to him, I talk to him. I had to remind myself, I'm not talking to my wife. I'm not talking to my children. So I had to get my mind straight. Huh? I just can't ramble. I have to get my mind straight. So this is what he's doing. And so in the next verse, he's going he's to he's take them to the throne. And he's going to really tell them what, what to do. He said, I will follow. Huh? Yahweh, Jehovah, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's not the greater. It's vast. So I get his attention. See, when I walk through the house when the children were younger, when I called them by their name, they would come. The other ones would just come to see what's going on. But the one that, that I called by name would come stand right before me. Simply because he knew they knew who I was calling. So we have to know who we call him. We call him on great Yahweh. We call him on great, great Jehovah. Right. We call him on God. Whatever ancient name you want to use, that's fine, but I call him God. God the Father. You said that won't be his name, but that's what I call him, and he come. When I start talking, sometimes I just start talking to him and, and he talks fat. I'm going to say, you just hear him voice. And I'm hearing God. And now we get the devil singing now. I say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, God. <laughs> yeah, he's sitting now. He used the same voice. You say, you're hearing voices? Yes, I'm hearing voices. That's how I know you do right. I'm not hearing my conscience. I'm hearing from God. Amen. He speaks to me, and sometimes it don't sound right to me. Amen. He tells me, don't do this. I said, wait a minute, God, I love God, I love God. He said, don't do this. He never changes. And so I have to do it whether I understand it or not. See, some people get confused with it. I'm just a man. Come on. But I'm doing that which the one that called me and sent me, I'm doing that which he's called and sent me. So I might do things out of, out of your order. Amen. 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 Because our Father, which are in heaven, mm -hmm. huh? how would be thy name? Amen. Huh? Amen. Thy kingdom come. How did it come? Through Christ Jesus. Amen. Think about it. 
Thy will be done in the earth. Some of us have a problem with this statement. This is Jesus praying here. And I'm just taking my time to break down this prayer. Some of us have a great problem with this verse right here. Thou will be done. But Jesus was letting his disciples know that it's not my will. But it's his will. When he was in the garden praying before they came and got him, he was praying. And they said sweat just dropped off him like blood. It was hitting the crown. And, and he said, let this cup pass on me. And he said, Father, Lord, let thy will be done. So, so it's not his will that he go to the cross. It wasn't his will that he does certain things. It was God's will that he be the sacrifice. It is not our will that we come into the church, but it is God's will that be done in the earth. It is God's will that we are sitting and listening to this sermon this morning, and he's coming to us individually. He's given us revelation individually. It is his will, not my will. He called me and he gave me a place. He called you and he gave you a place. He, he calls you up out of your sins. He gives you that place in your life that which you need at the season and the time that you need it. It is His will. Some people have a problem with that because they think it is their will. I can make it happen. Huh? Y'all know what they said? We can get it popping up in here. That means it's my will. Not God's will. I just want it popping up in here. Maybe God don't want it popping. Back in the 90s, they said, pop your collar. They used to pop your collar. <laughs> Some preachers here in the, in the situation, because we can ask that which we will of uh, the Father, He can give it to us. That was consensus there. But as when God's will is to be done over your life, see, everybody don't have the same destiny. Amen. So we have to get president that the Father sent Jesus to the Christ. We have to be present that, 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 that the Father sent the Holy Spirit down here. We have to be present that the Father do exist. Amen. The angels work for the Father. Amen. Jesus worked for the Father. Amen. The Holy Spirit worked for the Father. The bishop worked for the Father. The pastor worked for the Father. The church worked for the Father. As he will. The problem with us, we want to do it the way we want to do it, how we want to do it, when we want to do it, the time that we want to do it in. But the way I am said, that I am, that I am, and you do it when I get ready for you to do it. You can't even die when you want to die. That's folks that shot themselves in the head and they didn't even die. That folks that took balls and they couldn't even die.
them used to tell me, uh, sometimes when I would get somewhere and they couldn't get me, they said, I owe you something. I know what that meant. When I go to sleep, I keep my clothes on, put a lot of clothes on there, but they're going to come in there and get me while I'm sleeping. Because they owe me something. I know exactly what that meant. God owes all of us something. But because of the blood of Jesus, our debts are forgiven. And because our debts are forgiven, we got to slow it down right there. And I want you to forget this right here. He said, ask me. You know, we talk about I did $20, we did old scam, I ain't got me my money back. I ain't giving me no more. Well, God gave you those times when he told you to pay your tithes and you wouldn't pay your tithes. You said, Well, what's the pandemic? You still owe it. You owe God, you don't owe the church. I don't know what you owe. I didn't give you a year or two or year that you can 
That was a war in heaven, right? Amen. Huh? Amen. I, I hate to disillusion you in this season of Christmas when you're thinking about oh God is the same dick. Bringing you everything down the chimney. Uh -huh. I hate to disillusion you when you got you believing in some other God. God is working things out for you. When the angels that were surrounding got into their mind that I'm going to take the world of heaven. And they were sitting up to the third heaven and they tried to take over heaven. The angels which sees the cherubims and the different creatures of the Revelation, book of Revelation and Daniel that talks about it, the different things that are going on up in heaven. And how, remember how in Genesis, the Bible said he put a cherubim at the gate of Eden that Adam and Eve could not come in. Those are other beings that we know not of. But the angels knew of them. Because they was up there with them. And they couldn't control what they said. But the Bible said God didn't move. He said, go down. Send a lot of angels. And they took care of business for them. So we have to understand that we cannot control our flesh on our own. I don't care how strong you think you are. The Holy Spirit is your partner. And if you're not doing things according to the word of God, then you grieve the Holy Spirit and it stands back and lets you do what you want to do. Because it will send you as your help. As your guide, as your protector. So when you are around your guide and begin to lead your guide, your guide stops because you're going in the wrong direction. All of this is in prayer. I don't know why y'all never saw them. <laughs> uh, uh, and this is not the temptation, temptation but, but the deliverance from evil. Mm -hmm. This is the most important part that we use in our text this morning. That, that we, we must acknowledge God in sovereignty. We, we must acknowledge God and all things of who he is and what belongs to him. Jesus says to God, the Father, here in this prayer, in the presence of his disciples and the people that are standing around him, how for the dying. After he asks for all these things, the dead to real, after he asks that, that our uh, debts be forgiven, after he, he acknowledged of the kingdom that was to come, after he acknowledged who the Father would, how hallowed be his name, he says, For thine is the kingdom. Everything belongs to you. And the power, all power comes from you. We can't do not by our own power, but we do by the power of God. It is not by our own might, but by the Spirit of God. And the glory that we give to each other belongs to God. My brother, my sisters, you pray good, you did this good, you did that good, and I pat you on the back. Then God be the Lord. Because it belongs to Him. If I give it to you, give it back to God. And then He ends with this declaration.
So, so we got to know, know who we know, know and that we know. All power belongs to him. No matter where you find yourself, he has Paul said, no matter where I find myself, I find myself content. Uh -huh. No matter that the power of God, we say this thing every Sunday after the church. And you go in the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ simply because when you realize that the power and the glory, everything belongs to God forever. Right. When you realize that, you'll find that inner peace and you'll stop pushing and shoving, trying to make it through this life, trying to attain things that God didn't want you to have, trying to fight through it. You just sit still, ask him for it, and wait for it. The word teaches us to work for. Mm -hmm. God said, I give it to you as you will. In my name. Mm -hmm. Living for, living mm -hmm. with a true purpose mm -hmm. is to serve. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to leave you with on this morning. I don't know what purpose you've been living for. But I want you to change into that purpose. It's not for God. It is for yourself. Yourself don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. Yourself don't even know what's going to happen in the next hour or minutes. Yourself can't see beyond what you see in the natural. But when you begin to live for the purpose of God, God will open doors that have been shut. God will put doors on a building that ain't even have no doors. All right. God will give you that what you need right where you are. My Bible tells me that Jesus walked on the water. Amen. To two occasions. Uh -huh. Say so walked on the water. Walked to the ship. Mm -hmm. They're preparing for them. <laughs> he didn't need a boat. Yeah. He didn't need a car. Yeah. He didn't need yeah. an arrow of money. Right. But, but he, he just got, got up and started walking. Mm -hmm. Met the boat on the rough sea. Right. And in one place, when, when the sea got, got rough, he looked out on the seas. Sea. When, when he woke up, up he needs to be still. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the seas ceased. My God is bigger than what we're back to this folks tell me. Somebody ain't gonna like that. My God is bigger than the Catholics. My God is bigger than the non denominationals. My God is bigger than the Episcopal Methodists. My God is bigger than the Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses. My God is, I'm not putting down no God. I'm just telling you the God that I serve. He's bigger than what I can ever think to see about. My God is bigger than my own perception. My God is it's not working according to my rational mind. He's working according to what he knows and what he sees. Because he sees the vastness of the universe. He's bigger than the gravity that holds us in place on the earth. He holds the gravity that holds us in place on the earth. My God is bigger than what I can ever and you can ever imagine him to be. So, so let's start living with a true purpose in him. That he may live in us. That somebody may see his glory, his power, his might. And turn and ask that question, what must I do to say? So we're going to ask our praise team at this time to come and run us another selection of the witch. Our own Reverend uh, Minister the Green would come. Maybe the Green would come and prepare while I was sick and I was shit.
This, this cup is a new testament in my blood. This ye do, do as often you drink it in remembrance, remembrance of me. For as often ye eat this bread and drink, drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever eat and this is bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this is called being a weak and sickly among you. And many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to tarry for one and another, and if any man hunger, let him not eat at home, that if he come not into condemnation, and the rest of us set in order when I come. Amen. At this time, we can ask our own deacon and ask if you would to pray for our sacraments. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, Shed blood so, so we may have a life tonight. Yeah. We thank you, Father God. Now, Father God, we ask you to just bless us and come to represent his blood. He shed on the cross. And Lord, we ask you to say, Bless us and pray for the brothers in body. And Lord, we thank you. We love you and we praise you, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 We thank, thank you, DJ, and DJ Kness, for your job. So at this time, I'm going to ask you to take you, that which you use to represent the three, to take it in your hand. Jesus was sitting around to take me. He said, this is my body that has broken for you. As often as ye come together, ye do it. And I want to make a sub up. He picked up the cup. He said, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blue. As all the issues come together, he said, This is my life to the breathing. I want to eat and come together and drink it. Drink it. And then remember it. My brothers and sisters, I'm just, just going to say, say this, we make a few uses of the ceremony. This is one of the albums of the Bible of faith here at the Baptist Church. church. But God requires us to remember him. Yeah. Jesus requires us to remember him. And, and as all of this, we come together, we all come together in praise and in thanksgiving and in love.
Send your Holy Spirit to lead with us as we lead this place. Send your Holy Spirit to lead with us, Lord, until we come back together that day. And in Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and tell our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, until we come again. God bless you. May that smile upon you. God bless you.